there's a benefit to knowing exactly what to look for as you list these ties. How's it going everybody? This is Scott, also known as Chiching King, and today I'm going to teach you how to authenticate vintage Hermes tie. If you're tuning into this, that means you probably found an Hermes tie and good for you. I put together a short tutorial on how you can spend just a little bit of time authenticate what you've got. There's a benefit to knowing exactly what to look for as you list these ties. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you something really, really important to remember as you list these based on the information that I'm going to share with you. I have uh, a couple of vintage Hermes ties that I want to show you. And the one on this side is the very, very popular animal print. That one's a koala bear. This one shows some uh, interlinking patterns. There are some hallmarks that you can look for that on these silk twill ties that will always be there. If they're all there, you've got an authentic tie. The first one, it may be the hardest to see. I'm going to pop a picture up to show you what I'm talking about on each of these. On the front of it, the grain direction will always run that way from about 11 to 5, give or take. That doesn't vary. It always runs that direction. That's one of the easiest things to spot, but it's not the only thing. Let's turn this tie over and keep talking about the grain direction here. On the back side, on this part right here, this will be the coordinating silk on the inside of the tie. The grain direction always runs this way, and that will be 100% of the time. They're very, very meticulous about how that's done. Also, while we're looking at the back of this tie, I want to focus on this part right here, and I'm going to try and zoom in and show it to you on the very tip will always slightly fold over. Now, because the ties are sewn tightly together, sometimes that's hard to tell. In keeping with the importance of how these are folded, the silk twill ties are always folded the same way along this seam too. It will always overlap from left to right, but that's not it. It's more than just overlapping this way. If you look carefully, on the inside of this tie, it is going to be actually dovetailed around the right-hand side. They're always gonna fold that direction unless it's a fake or they've been completely destroyed. Well, they're gonna stay on the back for just a minute and I want you to focus on this part right here, the, the tie keeper. This is should not be the same fabric as the tie. It's either gonna be black or a matching color. And on this part, on the tie keeper, it will always be tacked in four corners holding that on. Also on the back, along this seam right here, down to the little bar tab, this will be hand sewn. These are made with a little slip joint. There will be a little bit of give in there so that this tie can move, so that it lays nice. And so that slips along there so that this tie can can move but go back to where it was. Because this is hand sewn all the way along here, you're going to have to have some extra thread. If you come across an Hermes tie that this is machine stitched on this backside, 100% that's a fake every single time. At the end of this, when we open this tie up on the inside, and you should always have that. Now how much of it's left will depend upon how much the tie was worn, how much it was stretched out, but you should always be able to find it. Let's focus on the narrow end of the tie for just a bit. This is the narrow end of the tie on the back side. And right here, you see the, the model number, the design number, and the artist's initials. This will always, always, run parallel to the edge of the back side of the tie. But it won't be an add-on tag, it will be imprinted into the silk of the tie. Imprinted, not a tag. If this is a tag or if it runs perpendicular, those are signs that what you're looking at may not be real. Let's flip this over and look at the other side for just a minute. If you'll think back, I pointed to the, the tie keeper. That will have six spokes. But on this part right here, this will always have five spoke wheels, four spokes or six spokes, that's not real. So uh, it will always be that way. Also, um, this will not be a tag. This won't be something that was added. The only added part is the little tie keeper. These are also imprinted into the tie. 
if your tie has all of those hallmarks, it's probably a real tie. Here's the benefit of knowing what these hallmarks are. When you list your Hermes tie online, when you put it up for sale, make sure that your photographs highlight these things. It does several things for you. A lot of the people that are buying these vintage Hermes ties, they know exactly what they're looking for. They know what to look for to make sure that it's real. If you show those things in your photographs, the buyer is going to be very, very assured that, oh, this guy's got a real one. I can look right here. I know exactly what to look for. And he showed me that. I've got a picture of that dovetail. I've got a picture of the little loop. I've got a picture showing the tie keeper really clearly so that I can count the spokes. I can see the design number and the artist's name. And I can see all those little details. So knowing what these Hermes ties have on them allows you to take better photographs. I hope that you're watching this because you found some. This one sold today. I've got to get this one shipped out. This one, uh, it's got little koala bears on it. And I took an offer of about 40. And uh, most of these ties for me sell for anywhere from 30 to $100, depending upon uh, the rarity. And of course, they could go higher than that if you hit something really, really rare. If you find this information useful, I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that like button. In the comments below, tell me if you've ever found one. Let me know if you ever found a fake and how obvious it was. I appreciate you being here, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.